Goose Gossage. Padres and several other teams, I think, 10 other teams of the Padres have made an offer tonight. Ballard Smith will meet again tomorrow with Jerry Capstein. In essence, the Padres would very much like to have Goose Gossage. One thing's for sure, though, they won't have to compete with the New York Yankees. Gossage made that very clear live earlier tonight on 10 News. Well, Mike, I, um, I have today in San Diego personally informed Mr. Jeff Torborg and Mr. Gene Michaels of the New York Yankees that I will not return to play for George Steinbrenner. I have told my uh, close friend and advisor, Mr. Jerry Capstein, that I have no interest in having Jerry receive any contract offer from George Steinbrenner. Well, that decision obviously enhances the Padres' chances and the other teams, quite frankly, that are still in the betting. But how about the Padres' situation? How does uh, Jerry Capstein see their offer? Uh, they are very, very interested. Ballard has told me that if the Padres sign Rick Gossage, he feels that they will win the Western Division of the National League and quite possibly win a world championship. And, of course, I totally agree with him. So we're going to be talking with Ballard tonight and with other parties, and uh, we hope to have a decision soon. The only thing that we've said about timetable is that uh, there will be no talks beginning Christmas Eve until the day after Christmas. Apparently, the Cage came up with some very nice numbers tonight. The Aztec All-American candidate scored 37 points to lead San Diego State to a 91-77 win over Texas. The Aztecs are now 5-2 with their next five games at home. Well, the Lady Aztecs won their ninth in a row. They beat UC Riverside 92-58. San Diego State University Aztecs against the University of Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Hello again, everyone. I'm Jerry Gross speaking to you courtside from the Civic Arena here in Tulsa, where tonight it's the final round, the championship game between the Tulsa University Golden Hurricane and the San Diego State University Aztecs. I'm broadcasting along with Stu Lance, a former nine-year veteran in the National Basketball Association and a former CBS television analyst. And it's a delight for me to welcome all of you to Aztecs basketball tonight where the Aztecs are hoping to have the third big Western Athletic Conference upset of the evening and or the day. As you in the air and it's won by the San Diego State Aztecs. They're in red. They'll be going to your right. And right away you see what looks like a man-to-man -man defense. The first shot of the day is missed by Bobby Owens. He tries it again. Misses another one. Cage inside with a rebound. Scores. That's what Michael Cage is going to have to do. Bang the board to get the inside game started. Michael gets his first rebound, and the Aztecs go into a man-to-man -man defense. This is the plan, to drop off, give them the deep outside shot, but play man-to-man -man out of bounds. It belongs to the Aztecs. A turnover against number 24, Ricky Ross, the 6'7 back line. And right away, the Aztecs are applying pressure, making the bigger guard handle the ball. They're not quite as adept at handling the ball as the smaller players. And you know they don't go into that trap defense you talked about when Koenig brought it over. That's Ross driving. Inside, stuff jam by Leonard Allen, and the Aztecs jump away to a 4-0 lead. Well, the Aztecs have started real strong. Let's hope they can maintain that kind of adrenaline. This kid can shoot outside, number 41. His name is Johnson, a great outside shooter. He misses that one. He made three out of four last night from the corner. The rebound taken away by Ross. That's Koenig with a bounce pass, and Cage gets another two. One of the things that Tulsa did not do very well last night was transition. They run back, but they're not aware of where the ball is. Boy, look at the bench. The Aztecs' bench is up to a man encouraging their club. There was the pass, the bounce pass, and the easy two. We're back to live action. It's just at the start of things, and the Aztecs leading 6 to nothing. a startling start for the Aztecs. Watch this guy. He's their great scorer. Number 20, Steve Harris at 6'5". He's missed again. The rebound taken away underneath by their big guy, Vanley. Vanley fighting for it. Cage gets it. Cage double team. The Aztecs bringing it up. They have been in command. The point man in this case is Bobby Owens. Jeff Koenig really is the man that they want to run the offense. He dribbles with either hand. He is a transfer. The bounce pass over to Owens. He loses it, and the Aztecs have their first turnover. And that's the type of turnover that the Aztecs can have. That is not a forced turnover. That's just carelessness. No question about that, Stu Lance. It's six to nothing. The Aztecs. We're at the start of things. The Golden Hurricane, bringing it up. They lack rebounding and point experience. That's the jumper that's good by Ross. No basket. They say the foul was committed. Did they do it? No, they go in short this time. They normally like to go into the corners, left or right, to Ross and or Harris. The ball kicked out by whom? Kicked out by the Aztecs. It'll be triggered underneath the basket of the Golden Hurricane. They trailed six to nothing. 
the Aztecs leading. They are a 12-point underdog in the ball game. They've gone what now looks to be a zone, at least on the inbounds play. Over to Varney, who loses it, and it's taken away by Ross. It's two on one, three on one. Cage driving, scores. It is going to be an offensive foul against Cage. Did he get the ball off early enough or not? No. An offensive foul against Cage, and you've got to keep him out of foul trouble, Stu. Oh, there's Hyatt, a good shooter. Number 24, that's the kid who's so tall, 6'7 on the back line. Ricky Ross, he's from Wichita, a senior. Look at the man in the middle, Vanley pushing off. He sets the pick, the shot's missed. They're still on the snide from field goal range. The rebound by Ross. He goes to Koenig. It's three on three. Koenig shoots, and he's hammered from behind as he takes the shot. He'll get it going to the line with a mark on the year from the line, 70%. Jeff Koenig, he's from Wichita, just a junior, hits normally 83%. As a matter of fact, his brother, J.D., went to San Diego State University. Not the J.D. we all know who owns a watering hole and a fine restaurant there and a great Aztecs booster. He is very quick laterally, recruited by Oklahoma State and Tulsa. Big night for him tonight if he can do the job. Formerly played at Johnson City Commercial College and at Kansas, was a freshman there and did well. But he doesn't do well on this occasion here. It's an eight to nothing ball game. That's the score. The Aztecs. I beg your pardon. He does do well. He has two points. Into the hole it goes and not able to take this. Haven't had a chance to sit down yet. They have missed five in a row from the field. The Aztecs bring it up leading eight to nothing. Koenig hooks it over to Allen. That's Ross. Ross will take a left-hander, but not that deep. He likes to drive. Bingo! Andre Ross now whacks it in. He's got two points. And the Aztecs with an unbelievable 10 to nothing lead over a ball club that's undefeated. 4-0. Johnson rims it, goes in and out. He misses it on the rebound, hauled down by Cage. Tulsa is now starting to press the shot a little bit. They want that first score so badly that they're coming down and taking too quick of an opportunity. You know, one of the amazing things is here, no one sits down until... Tulsa scores a field goal, and they're all still standing, the fans. So if you notice it on your monitor, that's why. They won't sit down until they score. It might happen here. Here is Harris. Ba-boom, he got it. He's fouled. Basket. The Aztecs have had four turnovers, and it's resulted in three points for Tulsa. In the ballgame now, for the first time, number 20, a freshman. Cage scores. That's Steve Holland, number 20, in the ballgame. That, that's Owens. He misses again outside. Cage with the rebound. Cage takes the shot. Banks it in. I'll say one thing for Owens, he's not quitting. He's taking the shot even though he hasn't hit yet tonight. Goes almost out of bounds and Cage saves it. Cage in backcourt. They are not going to go with their press now. Owens has it. No press. He dribbles away from the one man who was on him briefly. That was David Moss at 6-7. That's Ross. Bingo, he hits another one. He's hit three outside. Andre Ross. Holland driving, double, triple team shoots. He's fouled, no whistle. Cage with a rebound, banks it in. And he was hammered too. And Smokey can't believe it. He drives by, he beats him. He passes back at the foul line to Cage. And bingo, he whacks it in. And the fans felt that Koenig traveled, and so did I. And so did I. <laughs> okay. 83 68. The Aztecs are trailing with three minutes flat left to go in the ball game. But you got to give them credit. They battled hard. They battled about as far as they could. Held the lead for three quarters of the ball game, and really kind of got tired. Exactly. And the, as you see now, the Tulsa is just using the clock. The bench of the Tulsa Golden Hurricane has paid off. Give them credit. They've got a. They've got about nine or ten good players. They had the shot. Williams elected to bring it out. Koenig knocks it out of bounds and saves it. It's still in play, and here's Cage driving. Banks it up and scores. Michael Cage has 30 points in the game. And it is 83 to 70. The Aztec, the innovations uh, in cleaning up the sports arena, and what a great job they've done. And incidentally, uh, plans were in the market to do that about two years ago with contracts out and everything. And so it wasn't anything that came as a result of all the controversy last year. But in the San Diego sports arena, as you look toward the Cabrillo Classic, with the... Uh, it's a family-oriented place now. It's really, with the ice cream that they have in there, should be a lot of fun in the Cabrillo Classic. The Classic's coming up. Don't forget that either. That'll be in San Diego, Virginia, Washington, and East Tennessee. Teams that can all run exciting. Those are exciting clubs. Stu. That's another tournament that's run real well. And I tell you, if you haven't gotten your tickets yet for that one, get your tickets because that's going to be an exciting tournament. All four teams 
should provide a lot of excitement. You know,